Now, one of the takeaways from the previous lesson is that we can actually get pretty effective in assessing risk, either qualitatively, semi-quantitatively, or preferably, in most cases, quantitatively. However, the challenge comes, especially as a security practitioner, of being able to translate that risk, that information, into business terms, okay, to make it palatable for people who really have no knowledge of security terminology or technology. So a business dependency assessment is really the process of identifying the resources that are necessary to successfully operate a business. And so there is this kind of disconnect between the business people, okay, the people that are in the business of moving along the organization and being profitable, and the security people. And there needs to be a synergy between those two groups. Translating risk into simpler results for the non-technical business executives and stakeholders is critical. It's critical to the success of your programs. It's critical to acquiring new systems and hiring new personnel. Uh, for getting your programs and your initiatives going, it's critical that you're able to communicate this information to people who are non-technical. You want to use a variety of tools, especially graphical tools, things that can simplify and break down and help communicate the findings of your risk assessment and your risk analysis, and to be able to do it into layman's terms. Now, the good news is business people in general, your C-suite or your C-team, they're usually pretty sharp people. And so once you begin this process and they become educated into what those metrics and those key performance and key risk indicators mean, in a short period of time, they are very effective at being able to digest that information. So that's the good news. And often we can take the results uh, that come from our cloud providers or our big data analysis or from our seam tools or our NetFlow collectors, and we can take that and we can parse it, we can process it, and we can generate with very powerful tools nowadays, we can put that into some very understandable uh, charts other types of scatter plots, other information. So, uh, you know, bar charts and bullet graphs, things like that, dots and scatter plots, box plots, spatial maps and heat maps, of course. But the, the more visible, the more visual you can make it, the more understandable it's gonna be. And in the long run, you're gonna get better results from both sides of the fence, the business side and the security side. Here's an example of a dashboard, and this is information that's often pulled from a cloud provider or MSSP, and they have the raw data, which becomes information that is visualized, and, and this is a global map that we see here. There's all different types of dashboards, and the dashboards can be generated from security devices like a firewall, a next generation firewall, or an IDS, or an IPS. It can come from a SIEM system. It can come from other types of collectors, and there are a wide variety of different tools and algorithms and programs that can take this raw data, uh, it can either be structured or unstructured data, and present it in a way that ultimately is extremely, extremely visible and extremely pertinent. So for example, this is the IPS manager, and this is a single tool that can actually take a handful of sensors, either a sensor on a router or a modular sensor or a, a sensor that's part of adaptive security appliance from Cisco. Uh, it can take a wide variety of devices and then present this, you know, into pie charts. Typically, this is kind of a joke in the industry, you know, they'll say, you know, what are you going to use for your visibility tools? And the person will say, no pie for me, thank you. Because I think pie charts kind of get a, you know, they do get kind of a, a bad reputation just for being one of those tools that people to kind of run to, and they are kind of two-dimensional, you don't get uh, from bar charts and pie charts some of the deep analysis you, that you can get from other tools. And there, I mentioned scatter plots and box plots, things that can represent more than one point of data, and we're starting to see kind of moving away from pie charts and bar charts, which is what we're seeing here, into more robust, analytical representation and visibility. And we'll see some examples of that, you know, throughout this live lessons. But again, you know, here's a, uh, some visibility tools that you can see. And this is actually, you know, interesting in the way that you have your boxes here represented by certain applications. Uh, this is a box showing you, you know, Google 
and then you've got other metrics along with it. So this is what's being driven into a dashboard, into panorama from a next generation firewall from Palo Alto Networks. And so definitely want to use those particular devices, but more often than not, we're going to aggregate and correlate all this information from multiple devices and multiple platforms, maybe through log aggregation or other types of centralized enterprise systems so that the information that we're, that we're displaying through a dashboard is more typical of the type of dashboard we see here, which is coming from a wide variety of devices and platforms and protocols, you know, system logging, uh, firewall rules, firewall alerts, IDS alerts and alarms, as well as net flow collection, things like that. So uh, the more robust your dashboard, the better it's going to be for you and more successful for turning the risk information into something that's understandable for, for business people. And again, like I said, they do get better at uh, understanding this screwed information as time goes on. So some other terms that are more familiar from the business side, but maybe as a security practitioner you aren't aware of, would be things like TCO, total cost of ownership, okay? That's the original cost of, let's say, the firewall, okay, the ASA 55 whatever, and so the original cost, and you have to remember that total cost of ownership is more than just, you know, the retail or wholesale cost of the appliance or the hardware or the virtual, the, you know, the, the, the system that you're virtualizing, okay, the underlying bare metal and the licensing and those types of things for the software. It's the maintenance, it's upgrades, hardware upgrades, middleware, uh, software upgrades, the ongoing support training the individuals to use that hardware and software. And here's an important thing, TCO must also take into consideration the impact on user productivity during the deployment of that, during the transition from a different platform to a newer platform, okay, and just the downtime. So impact on productivity and uh, even impact on the bottom line for does it you know, reduce your, your sales for a period of time? Are people just unproductive for a period of time during the transition? That must go into the TCO as well. There's also ROI, return on investment, okay? This is the operating performance and efficiency that you get by dividing the net income by the total investment over a certain time frame. And for most organizations, this is a quarterly ROI or an annual ROI. There's also return on security investment. So this is ROI, but it's focused and related on security acquisition, okay? And remember, we're talking about tangible and intangible things when it comes to security investments. So the results of the added controls. So we think of, think of return on security investment. If we go back to our open fair, how we were trying to uh, decompose vulnerability. Remember, it was raising the level of difficulty or resistance, okay? Our security investments have to raise the level of difficulty, raise the level of resistance. However, it needs to be done in a way that we are profiting. In other words, we are getting our money's worth, okay? We want to get the most bang for our buck. Adding controls to increase resistance or difficulty to lower vulnerability in a cost-effective manner. And then we have to think about also another key consideration that we have to translate and we have to get across to stakeholders and the C-suite are the motivations of threat actors and threat agents. And let me just use for an example, if you're suddenly, you're in the entertainment business uh, and you're in the business of making movies or you know you uh, have a, a company that's, that produces a very popular television show and somebody is able to steal the scripts uh, and this has happened, you know, to HBO and others, you know, you have to be able to translate to those business people the motivations of threat actors and threat agents. And sometimes hacktivists, their motivations, they're just difficult to understand because they're almost anarchists in a way. And so motivations of threats and the actors behind it is also a part of your job in translating risk into business terms because sometimes, uh, you know, the CEO it's just, they just simply have no idea why, why someone would want to, you know, attack their company 
with ransomware or whatever, or do black extortion to steal the upcoming episodes and upload them, you know, on a file sharing service. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Why, why us? Why our company? Why didn't they pick on somebody else? And again, you know, investigating, is it a competitor? Is it state-based? Is it just an anarchy group? You know, uh, being able to communicate that to the C-suite, extremely important. Something else that can come in handy, and a RASI chart, it's one of those things that uh, we want to use, and we're not going to break down, you know, each element of this, but it does help to understand, you know, who's responsible. But when you have to communicate information, you don't communicate everything to everybody, okay? Not even on the C-suite or the C-team. The, the CFO doesn't necessarily need to see and get reports that the CTO needs to get, or the IT manager or the training manager doesn't need the same type of information and documentation and reporting that the CIO needs. So a RACI chart, R-A-C-I, can be a valuable tool in knowing who you communicate what to. So on this type of chart, you will have on the top, you know, kind of uh, on the uh, horizontal, you'll have who are the participants, who are the targets of your reports, your visibility presentations, your summaries, all that stuff. You can see we've got CEO, CFO, CISO, and other certain managers. And then, of course, vertically, we have different elements that we want to, to communicate to them. They're your risk assessment, okay? Internal IT objectives, objectives of your COBIT initiative, okay? Uh, your risk response evaluation, maybe the results of your gap analysis, right? Um, the information you get from monitoring a risk plan. So different elements for different people. So let me break down the RACI for you here. So the cells, you know, inside of this spreadsheet looking thing, okay, inside the RACI model or the chart are gonna be filled in based on four criteria. First is R, which is responsible. The responsible person is one who performs the work, okay? And there must be an R on every row, okay? No more, no less, okay? One R on every row, only one person's responsible. R is the only letter that must appear in each row. Then you have A for accountable. The person who's accountable is ultimately accountable for the work or the decisions being made. You want to use this letter where it's appropriate. So think about A, accountable, A, appropriate, but not excessively, okay? Uh, if you do it excessively, uh, you want to think about just key decisions, okay? Key decisions, key areas, key tasks at hand. There can be from zero to one A's in each row, but no more than one, okay? C is consulted. Anyone who must be consulted with prior to a decision being made and or the task being completed. There can be as many C's as are appropriate in each row. And then finally, I is informed. Anyone who must be informed when a decision is made or when work is completed. And there can be as many I's as are appropriate in each row. So again, use the RACI chart to help you know when you translate security information and you translate risk into business needs, this RACI chart will help you communicate properly and efficiently and have the right target audience for the information.